جان خانه سامی ها شکل کردیم بسم الله الله اکبر الله اکبر الله اکبر الله اکبر اشهد ان لا أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد محمد الرسول الله أشهد أن محمد حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الله أكبر الله أكبر لا
love you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters, the, the collections will now be made by the brothers and sisters. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. All praise and thanks are due to Almighty Allah for granting us the opportunity to be alive and to be able to come out today and to join with our community to pray on this beautiful day of Yawm al Jummah and to join with our community. My dear brothers and sisters, we also ask Almighty Allah to send peace and blessings on the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, upon his family members, and the companions of the, compa the companions, the companions of the companions, and to all believers. Um, I say thanks to Almighty Allah, and I and I thank Him for life. And one of the reasons that I wanted I say that is because I want to let you, the community here, know that this week uh, we prayed a janazah on Tuesday for a brother who used to sit right here for the entire month of Ramadan for many years, for over 40 years. Our brother Shamid Muhammad passed away and he was buried on uh, Tuesday. And inshallah, we'll make dua for him when we make dua later on. So we have to reflect. I remind myself and I want to share this with you. We reflect on us being alive, how lucky we are to be here and we also reflect on all the boons and favors that Almighty Allah has granted to us. Uh, we welcome each and every one of you here today, those of you who are here in the masjid, and those of you who are online joining with us, we welcome you. We know that during the summer that there is always people who are passing through our beautiful city of Toronto, and for those who are out of town, out of country, we welcome you here to our masjid. As for the collections, um, I just want to remind you that besides donating here uh, during Juma, there are other opportunities to donate. And if you go to our website, www.tarik.org, there is a donation page in which there are different options for donating by e-transfer or otherwise. So you can uh, donate, especially for those who are online and would like to contribute. 
um, please visit our website. Uh, today, our khatib will be our dear brother, brother uh, Sheikh Abdul Hamid. We welcome him here today in our midst, and we now ask him to come up. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahu akbar, Allahu akbar. Allahu akbar, Allahu akbar. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول يا على الصلاة يا على الصلاة حيا على الفلاح حيا على إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين به ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونسترشده ونعوذ به من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله الله بالهدى ودين الحق بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا أما بعد أيها الإخوة الكرام أوصيكم ونفسي أولا بتقوى الله فإن ربنا جل وعلا قد أمرنا بذلك حيث قال يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Surely all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for He is the creator, sustainer and controller of the universe and all within. We praise Him and we thank Him and we ought to praise Him and thank Him for His infinite grace, blessings and mercy. We believe in Him and put our trust in Him. 
We seek refuge with Allah from the evil inclinations of ourselves and from the evil of our actions. Know that whoever chooses guidance, there is none to misguide him or her. And whoever chooses misguidance, there is none to guide him or her. I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah. He is one and has no partner. And I also bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the servant and messenger of Allah, whom Allah sent with the religion of truth and with guidance, as a bearer of glad tidings and a warner, and one who invited to Allah and a shining example. First of all, brothers and sisters, I remind myself and all of you to be mindful and conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for Allah has commanded us to be mindful of him when he said, O ye who believe, be conscious of Allah in a manner in which he deserves that you should be conscious of him and do not die except in a state of surrender and submission to him. Respected brothers and sisters, one of the things that many people seem to find difficult about Islam is that it seems to them there are so many things we have to do as Muslims. There are many do's and don'ts. And especially our, you know, our youth, our children, they have friends to hang with, they have games to play, they have places they want to go. And even the grown-ups, their parents, you and I, we also have things to do. And sometimes it may seem as if it's too difficult to practice Islam and to live it. So today I want to share with you some thoughts about this matter. And I hope that inshallah at the end, each one of us will realize that after all, it is not that difficult. It is not overburdening per se to live Islam as a way of life. And I'm going to mention five points to you, and I hope you remember those five points. The first is, Islam is a way of life. This is why the Arabic word that is usually translated as religion is deen. Allah says, Al-Yawma Akmal Tu Lakum Deenakum. Surah Al-Ma'idah. This day I have perfected for you your deen. And that is your way of life. Deen does not simply mean religion. Because religion, usually when a person hears religion, they understand a set of rituals you perform every now and then. Every Sunday, every Saturday, once a week, twice a week, and you're good to go. But Islam, brothers and sisters, is much more than a religion. A set of rituals we practice every now and then. It is a way of life. It's a system. It's a process, it's a method. It's, it's, it's how you live. The habits you develop, your way of life, that's what Islam is. And what's interesting, by saying that Islam is deen, al-yawma akmal tu lakum deenakum, I perfected for you your, your deen, your way of life. The implication here is that as Muslims, we should live Islam as a way of life. So that its teachings should permeate every facet of life, every area of life. So it's a way of life. Just like we wake up and brush teeth and do breakfast, and we have that, that, those steps we take every day, that's how it should become, inshallah. The second point is that the do's and don'ts, and there are certainly do's and don'ts in Islam. There are things that are permissible, there are things that are haram, that we have to avoid, there are things that are compulsory that we must do. The do's and don'ts, brothers and sisters, are not intended to infringe and impinge on our freedom. Rather, they are intended to regulate our freedom, to regulate life, to enhance our ability to enjoy our freedom. In fact, brothers and sisters, if you take a look at our world, you will notice 
that all the countries that consider themselves civilized nations or forest wall nations, that's what they call themselves, what makes them civilized? It's the ability of the people to adhere to law and order. The civilized countries has the most laws, by the way, the most rules. Yes, they, they, they allow freedom, but there are rules and there are laws not to take away our freedom, but to regulate and to enhance it. And Islam is no different. Because many seem to think that the rules of Islam are to take away our freedom. No, it is to regulate it. Because without rules, without regulations, life will become chaotic. If we did not have speed limits on the roads, imagine what would happen. The kind of fatalities that we would have. Crashes and accidents and people dying from reckless drivers. We have rules and still people are dying in accidents. So the rules, the do's and don'ts are not intended to take away the freedom. It is intended to regulate and enhance it. Number three. The things that are compulsory upon us, the fara'id, they're not overburdening, although sometimes they may appear so. But if we look at them from an objective perspective, we will realize that it's not overburdening. It's not like if I want to be a good Muslim, I can't really be who I want to be. No. You can be whoever you want to be and be the best Muslim, subhanAllah. Once you stay within the boundaries, right? If you look at Hajj, for example, brothers and sisters, it is compulsory only once in a lifetime. Not even once in every 10 years or 20 years, once in a lifetime. Zakah is compulsory only on your savings that you have accumulated over a whole year, not just a few months. Fasting. And I know in the summertime this is a bit hard. It's just one month every year. 29 or 30 days every year. And when it moves into the winter time, it will be so easy as you, as you all know. All right, the day is less than 12 hours. You're not even hungry yet and it's time to break fast. And then we come to Salah. Salah is the only pillar of Islam that may seem difficult because we have to do it every day, five times a day. So this is the one that is bothersome for many people. But if we realize that each prayer has a time limit, a time span, within which you can do your prayer on time, plus there are Compulsory components of the prayer and some that are not compulsory. So we have Fard and Sunnah and Nafl. If you understand this, then you realize that prayers are actually quite easy to do. And if you take five minutes to do the Fard prayer and you have five of them, all you're doing every day is giving half an hour to prayers. We have 24 hours a day. Allah asks us for just half an hour, brothers and sisters. Half an hour. Allah gave us life. The same life we use to do all these things 24 hours every day. And Allah asks us just half an hour. Give me half an hour. And not even half an hour at one time. Just five minutes, five times a day, different times. And then the 23 and a half hours, it's yours, mashaAllah. Of course, the challenge... When it relates to prayer, the challenge we all face is to perform the prayers when we are busy or engaged in doing something. So if somebody is watching a movie, playing a game, doing some other work, and the time for prayer comes, this is the challenging part. Do we turn off the TV and do the prayer but miss you know, five minutes of the movie? Or do we leave the prayer and then and, and watch the movie? This is where the real challenge is. Which brings us to point number four. 
And that is commitment and dedication. You see, brothers and sisters, Allah the Exalted does not want quantity from us. But what he wants is quality. He wants us to show that we are sincere and committed and dedicated. And this is why, by the way, in Surah Al-Hajj, when Allah the Exalted talks about the sacrifice in Hajj and in Eid Al-Adha, Allah the Exalted said, لَيَّنَالَ اللَّهَ لُحُومُهَا وَلَا دِمَاؤُهَا وَلَكِنْ يَنَالُهُ التَّقْوَى مِنْكُمْ It is not the flesh or the blood of the animal that will reach Allah. However, it is the piety from you that reaches Him. And the piety of the heart, brothers and sisters, is manifested in the commitment and dedication and regularity with which one performs a particular deed or action. What shows sincerity and piety? It's whether you're committed to doing what you're doing or not. So it is commitment and dedication, being constant in what we do. This is what Allah wants from us. And this is why Aisha radiallahu anha tells us in a hadith that the Imam al-Bukhari reports in his Sahih. She said, سُئِلَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَيُّ الْأَعْمَالِ أَحَبُّ إِلَى اللَّهِ The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, which deed is the most beloved to Allah? If I were to ask you right now, brothers and sisters, which deed is the most beloved to Allah? What comes to your mind? Perhaps salah, or jihad, or fasting, or, or sadaqah, something like that. But the Prophet alayhi salam said, in his, in his response to this question, قَالَ أَدْوَمُهَا وَإِنْ the question is, which deed is the most beloved to Allah? The Prophet ﷺ replied by saying, the one that is done regularly and constantly, even if it is something small. Doesn't matter what it is. But if you have the commitment and dedication to be regular and constant, that's what Allah loves. Because that's where piety is. And as Allah says, it's the piety from you that reaches Him. Not the blood of the animal or the flesh of the animal. And you know that ayah, even though it talks about the sacrifice, the principle, the lesson applies to everything else we do in life. And the Prophet ﷺ continued to say, "Kalifu min al-amali ma tutiqu." Take on the deeds that you have the capacity to do. Don't try to do too much. Don't go to extremes in trying to practice religion. Or deen, right? Way of life. Which brings us to the last point. And that is, our deeds, brothers and sisters, will not take us to paradise. So no one should feel proud. MashaAllah, I've done so much good. I deserve to go to paradise. Our deeds will never take us to paradise. They are not enough to take us to paradise. So you're probably thinking, well, why are we doing things then, right? Well, Aisha radiallahu anha tells us in another hadith that Al-Imam Bukhari also relates in his Sahih. She said, قَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ سَدِّدُوا وَقَارِبُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا Saddidu means try to do the right thing, you know, strive, work hard to do the right thing. Waqaribu, try to come close to being moderate or try to come close to perfect whatever you do. Wa abshiru, but receive good news that even if you're not perfect, your actions and efforts are not wasted. Because Allah does not want perfection from us, brothers and sisters, He wants the effort from us. And if we put out the effort, then that is acceptable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet reminded us, we may strive, but we may not achieve that perfection, but we should not despair or lose hope. We should still receive the good news that our efforts are not wasted. فَإِنَّهُ, he said, alayhi salam, فَإِنَّهُ 
لا يدخل أحدا الجنة عمله For the actions of any one of you will not cause him to be admitted to paradise. Your actions will not cause you to be admitted to paradise. And the Sahaba were amazed at this. And they said to the Prophet قالوا, وَلَا أَنْتَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ They said, even you, O Messenger of Allah, the average person, we can understand, maybe we're not doing enough. We might think we're doing a lot. But the Messenger of Allah, subhanAllah, so they said to him, even you, like your deeds are not good enough to take you to paradise. And his answer is, Qala wala ana. He said, even I. Illa an yatagammadanillahu bimaghfiratin wa rahmah. Unless Allah covers me with forgiveness and mercy. So you see, brothers and sisters, our deeds are not adequate enough to make us entitled to paradise. But our deeds are important for two reasons. Number one, our deeds make us deserving to receive Allah's forgiveness and mercy. And when a person receives Allah's forgiveness and mercy, then they go to paradise. Then they go to paradise. And the second importance of our deeds and actions is that people are going to be placed in various levels in paradise. Jannah is not just one place, brothers and sisters. There are different levels. In the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, the Prophet ﷺ said 100 levels. And every level is not, each level is not the same as the, the one below or the one above. They're different. Of course, the lowest level in paradise is something that the human imagination has not been able to even conjure up so if the lowest level in paradise is like that well we can't even begin to imagine what the higher level will be like but people are going to be placed in the various levels in paradise according to their deeds See, that's why we work that's why we do we we, we, we strive because first of all to make it to paradise, we need to be deserving of Allah's forgiveness and mercy. And our deeds is what will determine that. And secondly, our deeds will determine what level in paradise we achieve. So I hope and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, having shared these thoughts with all of you, that Allah will open our hearts and minds so that not only can we understand this wonderful message He has revealed for the betterment and upliftment of mankind, but well, that we would all be motivated and inspired to live by this message. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive for us our mistakes and shortcomings. May He accept from us our efforts and our good deeds. May He bless us and guide us to do good deeds with which He is pleased with. And may He forgive for us our shortcomings. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'iri al-muslimina min kulli dhamb fa astaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafur al-rahim. Allah. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa salatu wa salamu ala ibadihi alladhi nastafa wa ba'd Brothers and sisters, just in case you've forgotten, let me just go over the five points quickly. Number one, Islam is a deen, a way of life, a system. Number two, the rules of Islam, the do's and don'ts are intended to regulate and enhance life, not to take away our freedom. Number three, the things that are compulsory upon us may seem difficult, but if you examine them carefully, they are not difficult. Number four, it is dedication and commitment that Allah the Exalted wants from us. Not quantity, but quality. And number five, no matter how much we do, mashaAllah, and may Allah bless us to do a lot, we should never be proud that we are suddenly entitled to enter paradise and Allah must uh, admit us into paradise but we should understand that despite how much we think we, we have done and we, we have striven in the way of Allah we should remain humble and hope for Allah's mercy and forgiveness because that is what will take us to paradise let us also send peace and blessings upon the messenger of Allah for Allah has commanded us to do so in the Quran when he said 
ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما الله says oh ye, uh, surely Allah and his angels send peace and blessings upon the prophet or ye who believe you must also send peace and blessings upon him a lot and the prophet alayhi salatu wassalam has told us in an authentic hadith man salla alayya marratan sallallahu alayhi biha ashra whoever sends peace and blessings upon me once Allah will send peace and blessings upon him or her ten times over. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid. O oh Allah, we ask you to send peace and blessings upon uh, our Prophet Muhammad and the family of Muhammad as you have sent peace and blessings upon Prophet Ibrahim and the family of Prophet Ibrahim. Surely you are the one worthy of praise, the majestic. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid wa radallahuma anil khulafa'i rashidin al a'immati al mahdiyin Abi Bakr wa Umar wa Uthman wa Ali wa an baqiyati ashab nabiyyika ajma'in wa anna ma'ahum bimannika wa rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin Allahumma a'izz al Islam wa al muslimin اللهم انصر اخواننا المسلمين المستضعفين والمظلومين والمصابين في كل مكان او oh الله we ask you to help and assist our brothers and sisters who are weak who are oppressed and who are afflicted in all parts of the world اللهم افرغ عليهم صبرا we ask you o oh Allah to inspire them all with patience and steadfastness وثبت اقدامهم and keep them firm in their belief and trust in you واجعل لهم من ضيقهم مخرجا and provide for them, O Lord, a way out of their hardships and their trials. Allahumma rabbana la tada'lana fi hadha al-yawm al-mubaraki dhanban illa ghafarta. And we ask you, O Allah, on this blessed day, to leave none of us with any sin except that you forgive that sin. Wala daynan illa qadayta. We ask you, O Allah, on this blessed day, to leave not, none of us with any outstanding loans except that you make it easy for them to repay the loans. Wala maridan illa shafayta. Leave no one who is ill, O Lord, except that you send down your cure and healing upon them. Wala mayitan illa rahimta. Leave no one who has passed away amongst us, except that you cover them with your infinite forgiveness and mercy. Wala waladan illa aslahta. Leave no child or youth, O Lord, except that you reform them and you guide their hearts to the right path. Wala mubtalan illa afayta. Leave no one who is faced with trials in life, except that you lift their trials and you ease their afflictions. وَلَا حَاجَةً مِنْ حَوَائِجِ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةً هِيَ لَكَ رِضًا وَلَنَا فِيهَا صَلَاحٍ إِلَّا يَسَّرْتَهَا وَقَضَيْتَهَا يَا أَرْحَمَ الرَّاحِمِينَ اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك قريب سميع مجيب دعوات وقوموا إلى صلاتكم.